Hey y'all, come on in. It's time to start Sunday dinner. Okay, let me go ahead and give you a rundown as to what's going to be on the menu. Look at all these nice veggies. Of course, last night I prepped all of this. This is some cabbage and onions cut up and I put some fresh basil on top of it. I'm going to stir fry that. So that's one of the things that's going to be on the menu, stir fried cabbage. And here, of course, you see these fresh lemons. Eventually, I'm going to make a lemon sauce for some other thing that I'm going to be cooking, but that's one of the things. Okay, I've also, so uh, last night I went ahead and diced up this gallon-sized bag of uh, white potatoes. I'm going to make a tortilla from this. I've got the onions and the potatoes in that bag. So these kind of things, when you're going to cook this kind of food, you can do them the night before rather than cramming everything that you're going to do into the day of so it saves my legs and my back so i got my eggs out over here that's going to be part of the tortilla and over here let's move right over here okay that's my pot there i'm going to stir fry the cabbage in a pot today so i'm going to show you how to do that just keep it real real hot that is chicken wings i've cut the chicken wings in half make into a v-wing and a little small drumette okay what we're doing today, we're channeling today a meal that we used to eat often when we were stationed over in Toro Home, Spain. So when we would go out to the uh, restaurants, one of the things that we always ordered was tortilla that I'm going to make from the potatoes. And we always did the uh, batter-free, crispy fried chicken wings with the lemon sauce on them. So that's what we're going to have today. We're going to have a tortilla, some cabbage, and we're going to have um, those batter-free, deep-fried, in olive oil. Come on, y'all. You know that's going to be good. When we get through deep-frying those chicken wings in that olive oil, sprinkle a little salt over them, put some lemon uh, juice and garlic mixture in the bottom of, on the bottom of that plate, lay those chicken wings on there, let some of that juice soak in, and you talk about finger-licking good. That's how it's going to be today on the flavor train. Then one other thing um, that we always ate along with uh, the chicken wings and the tortilla, we ate a raw cabbage sort of a dish. Okay, I'm going to stir fry this cabbage and I'm going to make the raw cabbage dish. So hang on just a second. I'm going to show you how I'm going to make this raw cabbage dish. Okay, here we go. I'm going to show you all right quick how to make this raw cabbage dish. Just this is just cabbage, the same cabbage that I chopped up for the stir fry. And what I'm going to do, what I did here was just chopped it up. And I chopped up some onions the same way. This is probably three cups, of, four cups of chopped raw cabbage. And all I'm going to do to this is I've already chopped up a slice rather some olives and some grape tomatoes. And I've got a lemon sliced here. I'm going to just put this in here. Now I've got cabbage and, okay. Cabbage and onion. So this is this is a Spanish style uh, salad that I learned to make while I, while we was there. Okay, and this is something I'm I'm sure you know. All these ingredients we use these ingredients all the time uh, for other purposes. I'm sure. So I'm gonna just drizzle it with some olive oil, and this is vinegar. This is a dark vinegar. Um, if I take the top off of it, it might come out of the bottle. Huh? So I'm just going to put some dark vinegar over it. Not a whole lot. Okay. I thought I had fresh garlic, but I don't. So I'm, I always keep some dry garlic. So you know, I'm going to put the garlic on there. And I'm going to hit it. This is probably half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just going to squeeze that lemon. Squeeze some lemon juice on there. And all I'm going to do is just mix it. I mean, it's, it's a real simple salad. And it is it's very, um, the spoon is probably too small, but that's okay. We'll make it through. But anyway, you saw how simple that was. So you got cabbage, you got uh, some onion, uh, some tomato. You could use a regular tomato. I just happen to have some grape tomatoes in there. So, so it's cabbage, onion, tomatoes, olive oil, olives sliced. A squirt of lemon juice, some garlic powder, and some salt. Just mix it up. And when you mix it in, and of course, you know, because I don't want the extra flavor, I was, I'll put just a 
little bit of that uh, juice out of the olive jar just to give that extra burst of flavor. And I'm mixing this ahead of time. It'll have time for that seasoning to go all through that cabbage. And if it's not enough seasoning there, once you start eating, sprinkle you some more salt on it, put you some more garlic, do whatever you want to do to it. But the whole point of this is to have this. This is almost like a garnish to this meal. So I wanted to make sure we had that because this is one of the authentic things that we ate um, when we went out was this cabbage salad. Rather than just a regular tall salad, just use cabbage with it. So, okay, I'm going to keep it moving. I'm going to go over on the other side of the kitchen and go ahead and start stir frying that cabbage. So I'm going to get these out of the way. It is now 1 o'clock. Dinner is at 3 30 so i got a couple of hours to get it done i've still got some other things to do so hang on just a sec okay there it is y'all there's the cabbage salad all ready to go i'm just going to cover it and stick it in the fridge for a little bit and then i'm going to continue on with the stir fried cabbage it's yummy now see i could eat this whole thing by myself so i don't really mind if nobody else likes it but this is what goes with the meal but we're all going to get a little bit Okay, y'all, I'm back again with the cabbage. I got the cabbage in the pot. Can you hear them sizzling? Okay, what I've done. Okay, in the bottom of that pan, I've got some olive oil, a half cup of olive oil in there. Really, 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 really hot. I chopped up a medium-sized cabbage, uh, two medium onions, and a half of a uh, green pepper. Mix that all together, then into it I put some black pepper, about a teaspoon of black pepper, two teaspoons of my chicken flavored broth mix, and I've already told you I've used the uh, extra virgin olive oil to cook them with, and of course you know I've got some, um, I didn't put it in yet, but I'm putting it in right now. I wish I'd have had my fresh garlic, but I just didn't have it. But anyway, this works well. About a tablespoon of, um, garlic powder and of course you know I hit it with the turmeric because turmeric is good for you and good to you and what I've done is make sure now that that grease is really hot because of what I don't want I don't want these cabbage to boil I don't want them to steam and that would be easy for them to do because they are in this uh, deep pot I still want to stir fry them so this is going to be a stir fry type of cabbage so what I've done I've kept the heat all the way up high so that they stay really, really hot. Because you know when you stir fry, you have to have the pan real, 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 real hot so that your food doesn't fry. It stir fries or it doesn't steam. So, isn't that a pretty dish? That pretty uh, lime green or light green cabbage. I got a good head of cabbage this time. It's a real pretty color. And then with the yellow color in there with that turmeric. And I put a, a few flecks of... Uh, red pepper in there. That's what I didn't tell you. I use, uh, we go over there again. This is, these are good products. Just some fresh red pepper. I put a few in. I'm just going to put a few more in there. They're kind of potent. So if you don't like real, real hot food, don't put a lot of it in there. Um, and as you can hear, the cabbage is sizzling. And that frying sound you hear, it, it's all olive oil. You see all my olive oil is in there and it's cooking into those cabbage. And I'm not going to cook them a, a real long time because this is like a do ahead. Um, it's like, this is 115 and by 330, they'll probably have to run them back through and uh, heat them up again. But this is one of my do ahead dishes. So I can go ahead and get this out of the way. And after that, I'm going to do the tortilla. Get that out of the way. And once I do that, it'll be around uh, 2 o'clock. And then that way, the chicken wings, because they're small pieces, it doesn't take that long to fry. So right at 3.30, they'll be coming out of the grease, and we'll be ready to get on the flavor train. And we're going to have this good old dish. I think this must have been nostalgia week, because this was Tanya's request for Sunday dinner today, that we do the chicken wings the tortilla and of course I thought about the cabbage and the cabbage salad so that was cabbage there frying up stir frying up pretty good but about I'll say uh, from start to finish the cooking process for this took them about 10 minutes and then you can stop it because once you turn the heat off it's, they're going to still cook a little bit you don't want them 
mushy and you don't want them too crunchy but you want them to the point where all that seasoning has cooked through and they just really taste good so in about uh, five more minutes I think I probably cook them about five or six minutes so and any thick pieces just chunk them up see there and they're really starting to fry now because that <coughs> excuse me the grease is cooking out of them and into where the olive oil that is cooking out of them into the cabbage so like I say again I don't I don't want I don't water in them that's why you don't see a cover of them so I, I don't want any water in them put that off the stove um anyway this is a real simple meal it's just that I have to cook so much of it so it takes a little bit of time but as far as um prep time it took me about an hour last night to chop to peel and cut the potatoes up to wash clean up and chop that cabbage and the onions and to cut the chicken up it's a good hour it's not a lot of time but one thing about it if you do it ahead of time it seems like you didn't do anything at all again I love doing what I do so it doesn't really bother me a whole lot but I, I just am a firm believer in getting my stuff organized and ready to cook it makes it a lot easier so now you see the cooking uh, how to cook stir fried cabbage in a big old deep pot just make sure it's hot 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 and keep stirring it and that's basically it no stir fry but about 10 minutes if you have to cook it a little bit longer then do that otherwise you're good to go so I'm gonna walk away for a minute okay one more thing I didn't share with you about these stir fried cabbage when you know you got a good stir fried cabbage is when you can smell them browning okay so there's no water in here but you see that little brown can you see the little brown in the bottom right there okay time to take them off all of the uh, oil has cooked through those cabbage and they are now stir fried cabbage no water in there I'm not gonna don't cover them because if you cover them that heat is gonna make a condensation in there so that's all I wanted to share so I'll be back okay while I was getting the potatoes prepared I went ahead and beat up 10 eggs I think 10 eggs is gonna be enough for that um, almost gallon bag of potatoes because you but you don't want to have a lot a lot of eggs in there but you want enough eggs in there to uh, hold them together so they'll cook well okay the other thing that I'm doing I'm gonna give you a little cheat note about doing this particular dish or anytime you use potatoes uh, and you have to watch this and be very careful may you need to experiment it before you put it into a recipe now what I do or what I've done with this you know I told you I diced up my potato washed them diced them season them and put them in the refrigerator in a uh, freezer bag uh, not to freeze them but just put them in the bag to keep them overnight now so I don't have to spend so much time on the stove cooking them I put them in the microwave in the bag with the little opening in there for about seven minutes so I'm gonna see after seven minutes how done they are and then when if they're done as I want them to be I'm going to put them over here on the stove and again, I'm going to use this deep pot to fry these potatoes because I like out a lot of them and I don't want to, you know, keep doing batches. Again, you got to have that grease good and hot. I've got a cup, about three-fourths of a cup, rather, of olive oil in that pan. And the reason that you have to put them, to fry them and can't just completely, or the reason I do it this way, you do not want to miss out on that great olive oil flavor, which is that authentic Spanish tortilla flavor that we learned how to make when we were in Madrid and Torrejón, Spain. So another little cheat note if you want to make this dish. You can buy the already cut frozen O'Brien potatoes. They're diced up. Now I always use um, fresh potatoes. It's just something about me and those fresh potatoes because uh, potatoes have a natural flavor and I like that flavor and you miss that with the frozen. So I don't use the frozen, but you can use frozen and just use the same recipe depending on how many uh, potatoes you're using. In this particular instance, because I'm making two nice sized tortillas, I'm using almost uh, one gallon of diced potatoes. But in this case, I'm going to use just a little bit less than that. But again, I use the fresh potatoes because I don't want to miss out on that uh, particular flavor. So. What I'm doing here now is I'm going to get ready to put those potatoes in here and I'm going to fry them and fry them until they get to, uh, they get done. And then when they get done, I'm going to take them out of that olive oil and I'm going to put them over there into that egg mixture. I'm going to mix that up and, so, and I seasoned it up all, all already with uh, salt and pepper and garlic powder. 
and then I'm, it'll go back into my pan that I'm going to make the tortilla with. So, uh, hang on just a second. Okay, I got those potatoes in there. They're cooking. They're doing great. You hear them sizzling. I'm just going to cook them. It's probably going to take almost 20 minutes to get them nice and soft the way I want them. Because once you uh, get done with them, they need to be pretty much done before they go into the eggs. Because obviously when you put the eggs in that hot pan, you can't leave it in there that long. So the potatoes have got to be done now. That's why I went ahead and ran them through the uh, microwave just to save a little bit of time. But anyway, this is going to take 20 minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I'm back with the potatoes. They're done, and it took about 15 minutes. So it cut off about 10 minutes of cooking time uh, by me putting them in the oven, because that's a lot of potatoes. It's going to make two good-sized uh, tortillas. Okay, so as you can see, they're nice and cooked. It's nice and soft. That brown, is that goody off of there? Let me tell you something. That adds character to the dish. That's some good eating right there. Mm. There's lots of it in there. Goes right into the uh, I'm gonna dash a little bit of salt in this. I've got a little bit in my eggs here. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and put these potatoes over into the eggs because I gotta heat my skillet up and uh <clears throat> excuse me, get it going so that I can go ahead and fry these tortillas up and have them ready because I've got now exactly an hour and a half. So it's gonna take me about 20 30 minutes to finish this and get them plated and set over there uh, ready to eat for later on. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and um, just beat these eggs up a little bit more. I got, I went ahead and used 12 eggs because that's kind of a lot of potatoes. So gallon bag of cut potatoes. Of course, whenever you cook them, they cook down some. Um, and what I do, just as a precaution, in case, I'm going to go ahead and pour off three-fourths of a cup of those eggs because if they don't if it's too much when I put them in there I don't want I don't like it too eggy this is a potato dish so I don't want it too eggy so I'm gonna go ahead and start just dishing these potatoes over into the eggs get them stirred up in there real good and like I said this is enough potatoes and eggs for a good um, two nice tortillas so yeah see I did good by taking those eggs out of there so we're gonna have some scrambled eggs here too to go with this meal you know me I'm not gonna waste anything okay you see how that those potatoes cooked no water and you don't want water in the pot you don't want any condensation you want them fried these are fried potatoes um, I'm glad I did I, I, I kind of you know what it's the shape of this bowl that made me crack 12 eggs when I knew nine was enough so I pulled off three of them okay let me tell you you learn those little things about cooking when you cook long enough and you have to pay attention to me cooking is an art uh, it allows for creativity it's not an exact science I don't know maybe some people think it is well let me just say this for the cooking that I do it's not an exact science because if it was Mm, I don't know. I really, really don't know how that would work out for me. So, when you're cooking, you got to get creative with it. Because I've made recipes sometimes, and my palate is very versatile. But there are some things for me that don't go with other things. It's not that there are certain things that I don't necessarily not eat, just certain flavors together. I like for things to complement. It's just like when you're dressing. You may have two or three beautiful items in your closet, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they go together. Or when you're buying furniture, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that couch goes with that chair. It may be a completely beautiful chair, beautiful curtains, whatever, but if it does not blend or match or pick up or complement or augment in some way, then you have to learn how to edit. Same thing in cooking. Um... One thing, so I don't forget, uh, someone was, I got a, a good, really good comment, I think last week sometime, good compliment and everything, good tip, and, um, you know, when you're cooking, there are certain sounds that come out of cooking, like rattling of pots, opening the refrigerator, getting ice out of the ice maker, whatever, 
and also stirring. If you use metal utensils on um, cast iron, you're going to hear sounds. You're going to hear stir. Now, let me just say this, and I appreciate anybody that those sounds, you know, sort of bother. But there are certain things that you can cook with uh, Teflon or wood. For me, I am super heavy-handed. Not only am I over the top with how I uh, do things, I am just naturally heavy-handed. And for instance, those potatoes, when I cooked those potatoes, they stick to the bottom of the pan. And I know well enough to know that I have to be able to scrape hard to get them off the bottom, uh, bottom of that pan. I can't do it with a wooden spoon because I'll snap it with my heavy hand self. Or if I do it with a plastic one, I'm going to snap it too. I'm going to bend it. It's not going to be any good. So I like, I have a lot of these metal type utensils because this is what works for me. So if those sounds get to you a little bit, you know, just, I'm sorry. I'm real sorry. But these are the uh, tools of my trade. These are what I use uh, when I have to cook and on certain things, like I say. Now, I wouldn't necessarily use this in a glass bowl. I mean, I have used them, but they make a lot of noise. Or if, you know, because I know I could use a wooden spoon or I could use a plastic one in something glass. But on a metal, heavy, cast iron uh, cooking utensil, the ones that I use... I have to use metal because I have to get down with that stuff. I'm telling you, I, I will tie up a wooden spoon or a uh, plastic one unless I'm do, you know, mixing salad or mixing cake batter or something like that. So anyway, just want to say those things about cooking. Uh, and some, again, about cooking being a creative thing. You have to get creative with your cooking in order to enjoy what you're doing. So I know I'm talking, but those were just things that came to my mind as I was cooking. This is what I do when I'm cooking. So hold on a minute. I'm going to show you how to put this tortilla in a pan and how to get it out. Okay, got that first one in there. Got it cooking. It's bubbling. And what I look for <clears throat> on the tortilla, you just have to look look around the edges around there. And you know after about five minutes, those edges around there will start to turn up on the sides a little bit. And you will know that it gets brown right in the center. So what I'm going to have to do in about three or four minutes from now, I'm going to have to flip it and get it back in there so I can cook it on the other side. This is a big one. I think when I made it before, I told you, just cautioned you against uh, making them too big. If you're not comfortable um, with that, because the other thing about this, I've got this cast aluminum skillet, and it's going to be heavy for me to handle, but I can handle it because I'm used to it. So I would suggest to you on your first time out, use a smaller pan or use a lighter weight pan now the next one that I do probably won't have as much mixture in there but I think I'm still going to put it in the same size pan just sort of smooth that make it look sort of even so this is going to um, be what we're going to eat with that cabbage and with those crispy fried chicken wings so I'll let you see it when I get ready to flip it over okay y'all I just stuck that uh, top over there to firm it up a little bit this tortilla is smelling, seriously, I'm being very serious. This tortilla is smelling brown. Again, you have to know the sounds, the smell, the taste when you're cooking. So when I cannot lift this up to look at it, but I know what it smells like when it starts to get brown because the uh, cooking process is nearing its end. So what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm telling y'all, don't try this by yourself, y'all, because this, first of all, this skillet, is heavy. Trust me when I tell you, it's very heavy. And grease that's been cooking over here for five, ten minutes is hot. So, what I'm getting ready to do now is to flip this. I'm going to flip this into this lid right here. Flip it over and get it back in the pan. So, okay. Here we go. Let's go. And what I need to do, I need to get both ends of this. So I actually need two because these um, cooking utensils here, these get hot. So I'm going to get over the sink with this. Y'all won't see this part. Let's see. Well, nah, I can't do the camera and all that over the sink. So here we go. So I'm, when I come back with it. Okay, got it flipped. 
back on the stove. And since that side took up all my olive oil, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit more olive oil. Doesn't need a lot at this point because it's basically cooked. And I always put a little pan spray in there. Whoops. Okay, we're going to heat that pan back up. <clears throat> but this is what I want you to see. That's what I meant by it was smelling brown, see? So you have to know the smells of your whatever you're cooking so you know how to handle it and how to get it done. So right back into the pan. Okay. So it's got to cook on that side. You don't have to cook it as long on the second side as you do the first side because by the time it goes to the second side, uh, everything starts to firm up. So all I got to do with that when it comes out, I'm going to plate it and then I'm going to put my other tortilla in. So we'll be done with the tortilla. I'm telling y'all, it takes, <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm sure, I don't know what they teach in culinary school because I never went to culinary school. So I don't know how they would have shown you to do that. I did this purely by instinct. Um, when I first learned how to make a tortilla, my neighbor, we lived downtown to her home, Spain, in an apartment building, and my neighbor used to make these. And, well, hers were not this big. If you know, uh, if you've ever had uh, the opportunity to, to go to Spain or live in Spain, I have friends in Spain, you know, they don't use real big utensils. Uh, so her pan was much smaller, but she'd always make two. But you know me, I'm extra, so I'm going to make this big old pan here. So I had to figure out how to get that big old tortilla out of that. So I've got these extra big lid. This is actually a lid that will cover that. So that's what I took it out with. But normally, what you would do would be just be able to use a plate to flip it back and forth. So with this, I'm using a lid. So um, I'm going to let you see the chicken. And then the next time you see this meal, it will be on the flavor train. Okay, y'all, here it is. Sunday dinner. We got Spanish tortilla, crispy fried chicken wing Spanish style. We got some stir fried cabbage and a cabbage salad, uh, Spanish style. And of course, we got the lemon juice to go over it. So the flavor train is here. I know y'all can hear me in the background hear them in the background they're ready to eat so i just wanted to show y'all what the finished meal look like so we're ready to get on the train and get to the to get let the folk off the train so they can come on in and eat so again love y'all thank y'all for stopping by and happy sunday dinner to lou okay y'all i can't remember who wanted to see it plated up but here it is plated up they get ready to sit down and eat these are the plates they fix y'all see there it is Okay, I got another couple. This is Kareem's plate. He, all he wanted is a plate full of chicken. Y'all see that? And this is Kareem's friend. He know what to do. He got a plate with everything on it. So that's what the plates look like when they get plated up. So we got plenty and they'll be eating until they get full. Kareem, put your shirt on.